Hello and welcome everybody back to the dumbass class with me, the Sexic Gamer, as we carry on our tabletop RPG series of... is that? Oh yeah, I didn't do GM, did I? Good point, good point. You need to put GM next to your forward slash R roll. <laughs> that makes a big difference. Um, yeah, just a touch, yeah. So welcome I'm, to our... I'm sure it's nothing important. It'll be fine. Um, so welcome to our tabletop RPG series of uh, Dark Heresies 1st and 2nd edition mix match um, where our group of uh, inquisitorial agents go forth and do the, Inquis uh, the Inquisition's work. Not doing amazingly well at the moment, but hey ho, you know, losses have to be accepted. Good thing is they're financial. So in the last episode, our group had claimed a base for themselves and then moved on from that base and found themselves an unlikely ally in the Adeptus Mechanicus Serus Victoria Mentorus yeah I believe that's their full name who is assisting the group at this moment the group found out that she was actually an inquisitorial agent herself and had been placed on this world some months prior uh, her team had been wiped out for attempting to do some of the ideas that the group had. Um, luckily, she was able to survive and using her um, servitor forces was able to reclaim a base. And is now in some ways assisting uh, the group with their efforts. However, some How members... she gets to have a cohort of servitors? She stole them, made them and put them together herself. Fair enough. Pretty well. Heresy? Heretics? It's, nah. not, it's not heresy. How many gerbils did she use? There no. were no gerbils involved. You didn't ask where the servitors came from or if they were once her, you know, colleagues and allies. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Less we know the the sound of risk we sleep. She, she did I say think. that she was a specialist in cybernetica, so. Yeah. Draw your own conclusions. But some of the group did not like the base that was provided for them by their GM and decided that they would go elsewhere. So because the day was not too late, they said goodbye to their ally and made their way back up towards Hab Block Zeta 1. Once there, the group decided that they needed some more ammo and could do with some upgrades. So they looked for a tradesman. What they found instead was Dodgy Dave's Equipment Emporium, where I've got all the stuff you need. You come on in and I will get you sorted, my friend. Come on in and have a look at the merchandise. Just don't touch it. So, yeah, yeah. And after Dodgy spending... Dave is an honest and legitimate merchant. It's of course I is. Wife... I've never broken the law. <laughs> it's his wife, Mary Dave, that does that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she's the brains behind the whole operation. But yes, after making their way in and paying the fee to get into the back room, uh, they were able to find out that Dodgy Dave actually has some okay equipment. Um, a range of uh, flak armors, I believe there was three. Most of them have been bought. We will double check, but I'm sure two, uh, two have been bought. Um, along with a lot more solid projectile weapons. Um, there are Hecata's... Um, there are Hecata pistols, which I believe is an underhive or a hive world pistol. There are far more solid projectile weapons than any other type in here. But once um, the group kind of did their shopping, Jenny made her way and began inspecting the uh, goods on offer. I don't suppose you have something with a bit more gusto. Uh, gusto? Uh, well, I, I got this, and he points out to a scrap cannon, which is quite large. Um, it's got a, it's got a lot of he kind of. He holds it like as if he's like riding a horse almost, and as he pretends to fire it, his pelvis thrusts dramatically. Is this what you mean? Something like this? N uh, I was thinking something more uh, less pew 
and more laser. Ah, I, I, I see. Um, so, are you wearing Maybe your red some... robes now, Jenny? Yes. Maybe something that, mm, I don't know, fell off the back of a Munitorum truck. He, he, so, he was going oh. to pick up another weapon. And as he turns around, you can see that there is a very small um, device in his hand. It's circular, but it does have a uh, extended barrel type of a deal. But after you say that, he um, well, uh, so um, I mean, I'm curious, what is this? Oh, this um, so curiosity, uh, just real, real quick, just for a second, um, tech priest. You, you, you're not going to be, like, particularly, um, angry about I, items I have? Look, look, I understand standards are kind of... Sometimes you just need to improvise. Look, I understand. It's... I'm not going to be beat you with a broomstick or anything. It's, it's... Are the rest of us here? Yes, you're all, you're all, as far as I'm aware. So. In the, uh, I'd in like the... to just, I'd like to just hold my hand up real quick for a second and go, Jenny, what happened to your voice? <laughs> Nothing. I have no idea of what you speak of. <sighs> okay, fine. The whole machine voice is kind of graining on me. Give me one second. So she does have a human side. Ah, you're just putting on the human voice. Don't worry. And 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 you are awfully not checking the mace for a gerbil. <laughs> uh, I hadn't thought of that. It's a bit small, you see. It's you know. I can assure you, sir, none of my equipment has any type of rodents in them. I would have removed them before and sold them for food. See, I like. Oh no, a gerbil isn't a. Uh... A rodent. Gerbil is a rodent. Mate, yes, I'm it is. And it eats cables. Yes. Oh, I thought it was the the stuff that made it work. Gerbil does make it work. A machine without a gerbil is just useless. There are no the gerbils place. in the machinery. I, I can assure you, techniques. there is there is no gerbils of any type. He kind of spends a moment, kind of like. He doesn't know what a fucking gerbil is, you know. He, he's he's <laughs> just it's a small rodent. It's annoying and it eats cables. It's so um. And but... the ship we came in on used them in their cogitators. No, they did not. I'm sorry for him. He he drank too much. Okay. Uh. Well, his thrones were as just, good as just... anyone else's. So just don't break anything. <laughs> You'll just have to accept this weirdness and move on. So, um, right. Uh, he brings back round a small uh, cylindrical device with a extended... Mm, it's almost a barrel. Um, well, uh, this is a Venom series uh, compact las gun. Uh, it was acquired uh, by myself. Actually, good point. Dodgy Dave's not in here. It's his wife that's in <gasps> Mary. here. It's Mary. Oh, it's, it's Mary who's okay. in here. So, uh, just my husband was able to acquire this. Uh, it is a Venom series uh, compact las gun. Um, one of the groups, yes. Yeah. He kind of winces a little bit. Yeah, one of the groups was able to acquire this for us. Uh, it's quite a um, a nice little weapon. Um, it's perfect for uh, concealing, keeping away from the uh, from the enforcers or the arbites, because uh, you know you should be aware. I'm sure you know you can't have las weapons for civilians, uh, kind of against the rules and all that. Uh, I'm familiar with that. Yes, um, it is quite pricey at um, 145 thrones, but uh, it's a weapon that you can uh, recharge. It doesn't have a uh, a uh, a las pack per se. It's it's all recharged uh, via plug-in. Um, 
this elf character where is that weapon in the book because i can't uh, find it so it is a is it the series S. S oh it's the pistol yep yep that's oh. the pistol but after you mentioned about uh the other that's weapons something. something that came from the munit uh, munitorum um she looks around and fortunately because everyone can see the rolls um she used her point of fate to re-roll from a 91 and got a six so, hey ho, um, she looks around and, well, mm, now, to be honest with you, we don't normally sell weapons that are too difficult to hide. Um, the, the, for example, the shock baton is, is very illegal, um, but, you know, you can hide it, so you can, can I, get away from our, from our shop. Um, can I just point out, she just tried to sell us a scrap cannon? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's built out of scrap. It, it, it's a, it's a, it's a ginormous thing that you basically set up and then fire off and then leave it. It's, it's a horrendous device, but yeah, they have one. How much is the scrap cannon? <laughs> I will find like... out in a minute. Um, uh, if as long as, as long as you're not found with it, as long as you don't, uh, as long as no one finds out it came from us, um, then I suppose it would be 75 thrones, um, so it is uh, cheaper than the pistol, but obviously more powerful and dangerous. Um, she goes over to one of her uh, display cabinets, and not, even, not in the display cabinet, she goes underneath and unlocks a uh, sliding door slides it over pulls out a gun case quite a large gun case probably too large really but you can see that it has locks on it as well and she takes out a key and unlocks clicks the opening mechanism opens the uh the gun case and you can see in there is a um a Darius prime is yeah, Durius, Durius, isn't it? Durius, Durius, Durius Prime. A uh, Durius like, Prime like saint, Lasgun. Like that saint. I think Durius. I think Durius. Um, hmm. Yes, a, uh, yes. A, yeah. one of the um, patent of Laz guns that is commonly given to the guard. PDFs. If and I PDF. Believe, if I, hmm. I believe it's... Maybe in Janus, are we? The big, really bulky one. No, no, this no, is no, different. No. This is the cheapest las the, gun. Yeah, because uh, the Janissaries uh, use, I think, M thirty five pattern las I gun. I think they do because they've got the bigger. Which is the bulky one? Which is kind of, which looks kind of like a bolter. Yeah. Yes, so I believe like this one or... is for the PDF um, and or the Imperial Guard who are. Equipped on with a less than ideal weapon, um, it's more commonly used within the PDF. Yeah. Oh, this one looks very, okay. very nice. Seventy-five, you said. Uh, yes, yes, that would be correct. Hmm. Can you drop me maybe uh, two extra packs for it? <laughs> oh, oh, packs. Oh, we don't have any of them. Um, oh. it, it's well, I'll deal with that. Most of our weapons, uh, like you can see that there are very, very few Laz weapons in here. There was a Laz... Um, actually, there was a Laz gun, or was it a pistol? I think I said it was a pistol clip in the front of the shop. Um, uh, we can try yeah, and no. get you some. Um, that wouldn't be a problem, but we'd have to check on our uh, suppliers. Um, but we'll, I believe he has our comm number. Uh, we, can, we can give you a message uh, to come and check in with the shop. And if we know we've got someone who will buy them immediately, we're more likely to try and get prohibited items. Uh, yes, yes. I suppose I could uh, place an order, so to speak. Uh, you don't 
No, you said you sold all of your flak. Hmm, unfortunate. I was looking for a pair of gauntlets. Oh well, yeah. next time yeah. maybe. Armor gets old. Because there's the, the poor quality at the front. I don't think anyone bought it. Yes, there's a poor quality armor in the front. Um, no, nah, I'm I'm just looking specifically for like standard pair of just gauntlets. Because yeah. I'm gonna engage in some tech heresy. Um real quick, Albit, did you buy a pair of uh flak armor? I believe I did. Yeah, if it's on your character sheet, then you would have bought it last time. Uh, what gave me three armor overall? The flak armor. Like you guys had what? Had you at best, you guys had gang levers to start with, which yeah. was one. Yeah. So if you've got three armor, then yes, you bought the. <laughs> you definitely bought the uh, the non-primitive guards <laughs> yeah, you armor. Uh, can anyone tell the weight? I get it now. Give me a second. Uh, how much was the proper quality black armor? Um, it was what a flag, light flag cloak, body light... armed legs, yeah. and a helmet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, light flag. Um, helmet is two kilos. Light coat is four kilos. Sorry, this I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 that's fine. That's not a problem. How much was it then? The scrap cannon, just so that we're clear, that's 150 uh, thrones. The armor, okay. I need to go to. Which book do I need to go to? No, it's one of these. Generic Dark Heresy. First edition. And they just want the great flag coat, or flag great coat. Uh, they don't have that, but you have seen someone who's wearing a very similar armor to that. Yeah. That's the case, just aim for the legs, because apparently it doesn't... <laughs> Despite uh... it being a great coat, it doesn't aim for the legs, or it doesn't cover the legs. Yes, that, that was something that, uh, that you'll find out that I modified I have... for certain groups. I have right. one question for... Just for clarity's sake, the last gun I just bought, does it have a pack in it yes, already? Yes, it has or... a pack in it, but there's no spares. Okay. So, so if she yeah. doesn't have a pair of flag gauntlets, that's pretty much my shopping done? No, they only had three sets of full armor. Um, if... Armor's more, far more difficult for them to get, yeah. um, but seeing as more people have been shown an interest they will try um but they have both used two of their roles at the moment um where in the fuck did i put the price for the armor Ooh. this is the problem with having so many books <laughs> I, I love having so many books but but you hate having so many books yeah at times <laughs> just just for just yeah. for when you're like i really just want to see the price for this one item. And well, you can't find it. I could, the flag helmet is 25. Light flag cloak, 80. That's what it is in the core book. I don't know if what your modified price is. I think. I cannot remember where I found light flak armor from, and I can't remember where, which book it was from, which I normally don't do. Let me just check the Dark Heresy one, because I know I saw it as light flak armor, and it covered everything but the head, and I put in the head armor. Light flak coat. Oh, well, nice. Cloak. Oops. There it is, light flak. Yeah, yeah, no, it is the light flak 
coat, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, it would be too. eighty, and I probably added on twenty for the um, twenty-five for the helmet. So it's hundred and five. Okay. Yeah. Probably gonna need the extra armor. So. Yeah. It's only two. Arms are, are body arms legs. Yes, but that's um too advanced. Ah, true. You're not dealing with none of that primitive. Yeah. Right. So, as you uh, go through your equipment and you've bought your uh, your items and you're checking, I imagine you'd check the you know make sure everything's clean, everything's tidy, everything's working. Um, uh, Mary turns to you all. Now, well, you know, it was uh, it was very nice of you all to come in and uh, buy some of our our premium merchandise. I hope you'll remember us in the future, unless you get caught and you know forget you ever came here. Gives you a big broad smile. <laughs> will do. Will do. Just give him a quick nod and shuffle out. Maybe next time I can ask for a weapon. <laughs> right now I'm too shy. I need to get them known a little bit better. <laughs> I just give give them a nod as I safely tuck away the shock mold into my backpack. I just realized something. As an Adeptus Mechanicus, technically I am not a civilian. Yep. That doesn't exactly mean I'm going to wear this Lasgan out in the open. Like, I'm going to try and conceal it in my robes, but, like, You're I feel right. like I can maybe sell it with a bit more lev levity. To be to be fair, big red robes are going to make you a target to people who don't like the Mechanicus. <laughs> also true. <laughs> also very true. Also, big red target to people who want to pickpocket someone who looks rather rich, because... Mechanicus. <laughs> so it is probably understood, even for uh, even under hivers, like look at Jenny in her red robes now and kind of give her a decent bit of distance. It's quite common knowledge what happens to people who touch Mechanicus. They get server they get server thrown. <laughs> yeah, um, it, in first edition, it is. I think it's in the rule that it's heresy to look under a under a tech priest's robes, <gasps> or it's like the mechanicus is heresy. Yes, there are no gerbils. gerbils. I swear to fucking god. It's just a mass of gerbils in a robe. <laughs> I'm gonna murder you all in your sleep. So I'm gonna servitorize the goddamn psyker. I believe <laughs> we spent four hours. Um, in your base where you were doing stuff with you fixed everyone's equipment uh jenny well it was three hours mm -hmm. so it's taken five hours of traveling um to and fro plus your uh your three to four hours you're looking at about eight to nine hours into your day probably say you've done shopping for at least half an hour an hour um so we're coming up to nine, ten hours um, of today. Obviously, you got up early, so it's not the end of the day by any means. But keep that in mind. You have done quite a lot today. Um, so as you exit from Dodgy Dave's Equipment Emporium, you see that there's a, there's a slightly larger traffic flow as uh, people are finishing shifts and apparently going to work to start shifts. Mm. One's going to work, one's going from work. The shift exchange. I, huh, I, I suppose I should actually do some work or I won't get paid. And I don't think I'm gonna... I don't think I'm gonna make it to my shift. So you're currently on the hab of hab block zeta. You can, you can always, you know, it, it's been 10 hours, 11, 12, <laughs> 13. 
I'm gonna be awfully late, aren't I? You would. You would. Is it just, better just... to be late or not come at all? Hmm. <laughs> I think that's what my sister said before she had her babies. Mm. So, really? <laughs> bad phrasing, Wilder. Bad phrasing. Very bad phrasing. So, um, dear Je God, Jenny, you would, you would, uh, you would. God, my brain is trying to. Um, so you would realize <laughs> that um, when you were in that infirmary, you were probably the most qualified person there by several hundred degrees um it wasn't it was an infirmary for mm. for manufacturing workers the imperium doesn't really give a shit about manufacturing workers so yeah i mean they give more shit than about the miners it depends servitor miners are actually you know they they they, they care about them because they have cybernetics yeah yeah, yeah human ones not so much because they've become one with the Omnissiah. Mm, I imagine, no, no, I imagine I would actually come to work, even if a bit late. Because after all, I am a great Megas biologist. I make my own hours. Okay. This work is beneath me, peasant. <laughs> okay. So, um, you like bear farewell to, uh, to your group, telling them that you will head off to do your proper job and you travel for four hours to get to the um, infirmary where you were placed 14 oh. hours of today you all uh, leave dodgy dave's weapon emporium and you see uh, jenny make her way off to her job uh, actually before uh... Because someone here got, got a microbeater, right? Yeah, I got one. Oh, I'll, got I'll just drop you my com, com number. So in case anything happens, it, I'm just you can just call me. Um, Jenny, just as, a, as a heads up. If there is range. So if there is range. The Mechanicus, uh, Sarah's Victoria Mentoris, she's told you whilst you were doing the maintenance on the equipment, you have her microbead. Um, yeah, number. I know that I have hers. She also would have informed you uh, at that time that she has hacked into the Mechanicus's um, communications grid. Mm -hmm. So she is able to boost the power of um, her transceivers and access not all of the hive, um, particularly the, mid, uh, the lower hive she has complete control over and the middle hive she has complete control over. Um, so communications throughout those areas for you and your group will be relayed by her. So you oh. will be able to communicate with each other. Um, that means I can move to the middle hive hospital. <laughs> and leave us all behind. Yes, and extend the travel time even more. <laughs> Guys, I like to put out you were hired suck. as an engine seer. Now you're going back as a tech priest. No, I was I was actually hired as a medical professional. Yes, but you were in engines here robes. And now you've suddenly got mechanicus robes. The robes aren't actually that different. It's fine. I'm I'm an eccentric medical professional, okay? Don't Just like to dress differently. <laughs> We never saw not. another Mechanicus, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. I could, I could uh, one day go back with treads for all day, no? <laughs> true, true. So, four hours will pass for our dear Jenny as she wanders off to her job. Uh, Jenny, you would definitely note that um, people do take notice more of you walking around on your own. When you're on your own, you would notice that people definitely get more on edge than when you're walking around with a group. Apart from that, nothing happens to you. Uh, so, for the rest of the group, you leave the equipment shop. Where would you like to go? You are 10 hours into your day. Uh, um, 
I would ask. So, any one of you guys know how to get some money for our next step? Didn't. Uh, sorry for the name. Liliana say she wanted to go back to the poison kiss or something. Tell them that we cleared out that place. Not the rival. Was it the rival? Technically, Tiffany just told me about the place. She didn't tell us to go there and murder everyone. Yeah. So... I don't believe we got orders or even. It was just, hey, here's a place of nuisance. Well, if you go tell them again. we actually did clear it out, though. And we're still alive to show it. But They'd then again. they probably give you something to do. So I'll, I'll, probably go, kind of... I'll probably go meet with Tiffany later today. Who knows? Okay. Maybe have dinner. You dinner or she? <laughs> She's just gonna smile at you. I knew it. Oh god, okay. So it's um, entirely up to you. Uh, you've, Like I said, you're 10 hours into your day. So if you want to go and see the Poison Kiss, you can. If you want to go and do something else, it's entirely up to you. Um, the jobs that you have at the moment, you only really have one. Um, and that's from Ceres. And that's to head into the Underhive and go and get some fungus for her. Or biological samples. Sorry, how long has it lasted? 14? Years? No, for you, um, today, only 10 hours have passed since you got up. And assuming we got up at 8, had breakfast, so we, and left at 9, so it's currently 19 hours? Sounds so about it's right. Idea. It's about 4 o'clock, for those who don't use 24 hour. Oh. I mean, we could start looking for the fungus. No, sorry, not not four o'clock. It'd be it's at seven p.m. <laughs> yeah, seven. Sorry, my my brain took a moment then. Um, so for you to go down to the underhive, um, to go searching for fungus. Um, Ezio, have you ever been on a hive world? Well, no, actually, you've, you've explored looking for a base. Um, you would know that that's going to be a long mission. That wouldn't be something you want to start halfway through your day, for example. Yeah. Unless we go a bit lower and look for something we can camp out for a night in and then start fresh the next day. I mean, I was planning to take a rest in our Mechanicus friend's space. Yeah. We did get a room there. Should we... And it seemed secure. Yeah. She knows what we look like now. At least she probably won't kill us on sight. Well, she shouldn't anyway. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be like, she'll, she'll kill us. At least me on sight, definitely. If we're gonna go back there, I do want to see what I can do to uh, fortify it a little bit better. Because uh, it's a great position, but if we're caught by surprise, it's a kill zone. Quite simple. Yeah, um, that's help true. you with that. Because um, it's one way so, in, one way out. And so guardifying our base begins. <laughs> <laughs> Clandestine inquisitorial safe house sandbags barbed wire. <laughs> I mean, clandestine murder. You're talking to a guy who was on a planet who was under siege by a Tyranids. <laughs> He's gonna <laughs> want to fortify his base. <laughs> that is a fair point. So you could do that. That's perfectly within your uh, realms to do. You know that it's a, it's a you basically have two bases. You have one base yeah. that was, well, for the meantime, is a storage locker for the for the corpses that you that you uh, that you <laughs> killed um, or stuck in there. The other one is more of a hangar that has sleeping quarters that's closer to the Mechanicus. If you want, you can go and fortify that area and turn them into bases. Um, 
that's perfectly doable. If you want to buy some resources for you to, you know, just things that you would need in order to do an expedition from there, you can do that. Um, that's entirely up to you. Okay. I'm going to go take a look there and just get a get an idea of what we're going to need to make a good good fortification for there. Uh, but I can do that by myself if you guys want. Because I'd often do something else. I mean, uh, if we're going to use it as our home, we need more than just fortifications. We need to give it the well, at the moment, we don't have much in the way of sandbags, emplaced weaponry, barbed wire, or anything like that. <laughs> We're going to have to see what we can set up as choke points and everything there at the moment. We have the door code, which is good. Which um, is a good phone oh, line. Oh, please. We have bodies. <laughs> we do have bodies, but... Uh, bodies, can, bodies can be used as sandbags, it's fine. Darius. You don't want to be in an enclosed space with uh, corpses after they begin to uh, decompose. Darius, you did Unless see a number of boxes out. down there, uh, like old uh, crates and containers that you could rearrange. Um, okay, yeah, that could work. Alright, give me one second. So sure, if anyone is thinking that they want to use that base as a staging post or they want supplies in there, by all means, you can buy rations, uh, you can get civilian rations from within the Underhive. Um, you can buy them as standard, you'll have to look, at, look them up in the book. I think they're like 5 thrones or 15 thrones. Um, so that you actually have food to... Well, if you're going on long expeditions, you may want some food for when you're in your base. Um, you could hunt for, for small game, I suppose, if you're in the Underhive, it is doable. Um, I could just summon some to us. This is also true. Um, Please don't. <laughs> you could indeed do that. Um, but if there's any things that you would need to buy, you can go through your um, you can go through the equipment book and just buy it. If it's things that you'll need for survival, like for example cloth, or if you want to find, like I said, rations or a water canteen or anything like that. You can just go and add it to your sheets, deduct the money, and um, that's all. You can actually buy sandbags on a war world for four thrones each. Hmm, interesting. Um, like a, Just anything that you think you might need. I'm not going to help you here. When you find out that you don't need something, you can walk your asses back. <laughs> but for now, we've got Darius, who is going off to the base to do some securing and fortifying. Does anyone else want to go with him? Um, um, more to go, I, 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 I would, but not to necessarily fortify, but to try and just clean up in general. Sure. Maybe uh, immolate the corpses to actually get rid of them. <laughs> sure. You could do that thing. if you wanted. I would also go with... Uh... I mean, what would the other group want to do? We'd be fortifying. Yeah, guess I would do that too. Helping with the fortification. With the disc and Imperial Fist, right now. <laughs> right, I'm gonna get a bed roll. Cause, uh, by the way, uh, the beds down there are broken. There's literally no mattresses. Just a frame. So, get a bed roll. <laughs> Where are bedrolls? <laughs> bedrolls are in the Inquisitor's Handbook 81 82. And they are 8 thrones and 4 kilos. Oh. This is why I use the big sheet. Yeah, yeah I was you, using the big sheet. If you want, um, basically, as long as it's living equipment and just stuff for you, like if you want a grooming kit or a mess kit, you can buy it from the War World equipment list. I won't restrict you for stuff like that. Um, just grab it if you need it. So, what about an infantryman's uplifting primer? 
<laughs> you probably... You're an Imperial Guardsman, you should have it on you, otherwise it's a I should, but it was taken off me for some reason. You probably <laughs> could actually get one, because I don't imagine it's that difficult for them to get those they off. They are plentiful. I mean, that is on a war world. They're plentiful. Um, so technically, because you're on a hive world, things should be easier to get um, if it's made on a hive world. Technically, it should be harder to get for that stuff, but fuck it, I'm not. They, they equip guardsmen here. I imagine they can easily get extra bedrolls and stuff and sneak them out and whatnot. Um, so, it's only Jenny and uh, Liliana who are actually... No, Liliana, are you going with the group to fortify or are you going off to do oh, something no, no. else? I'm going to go see Tiffany. Okay. See your squeeze. <laughs> Who's going to be squeezing who? <laughs> yes. Yes. So, let me see how this is. I wonder if I can give the players access to um, to items and if they can move them around. That would be very, very interesting if I could. Um, if they are, if they are in the token layer and are they background or are they actual items? No, as an they're, NPC. They have, no, they're items. They have actual data card. They're, well, um, boxes. Has... No, there's no sheet for it. There would be boxes. Yes, I, I don't think we can. And if you go to edit, there isn't on editable by. Well, no, I need to see if I can give you access. That's what I'm controlled by all players. Okay, so this is. I really, I shouldn't have, why did I pick that item on this, on this bloody, and also these are the wrong, damn it, I'm on, ah, went on the wrong thing, god damn it. So yes, it does look like I can actually give you items to uh, put down. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all of you over to uh, this map. Because technically this is the map that you can upgrade. I do apologise for those of you who didn't want to be near the Mechanicus, but suck it. Um, <laughs> you can't upgrade the other map. It's not built with tiles that I can like, give you access to. So, um, you're not here. Goodbye. Disappear. <laughs> you're not here. Disappear. You're not here. Disappear. Uh, so, All right. we will go over to Jenny first. So, Jenny. You are currently making your way up uh, through the Underhive. Um, you're making your way to where you're supposed to be working today. And as you make your way up, you can see that something must have happened because the uh, medical staff, if you can really call them medical staff, are running around rampant. They are going this way and that, pulling out um, screaming people from within um, the manufacturums underneath and are uh, bringing them into the uh, into the hospital wing, not hospital wing, the uh, first aid wing, quarter, whatever you call it. And they appear to be doing some nasty work. There are, it appears as if there are um, several severe burns that have uh, have inflicted the individuals that are coming out. Something within the uh, the manufactorum has gone horribly wrong. Mm. Well, I, su I suppose I'm going to have a busy day. As you make your way over, Jenny, uh, you would see several of the nurses who are bringing people in, taking them out. There's a really quick procession of people just coming and going. And the nurses are just working at almost ludicrous speed for mere humans. Uh, as they see you, uh, would they recognise you? You've only worked here once, so... But you were the best who's out of the doc 
that of the medical staff. So yes, they probably would. So one of the uh, nurses waves over to you and um, uh, uh, Tech Priest Kyrajan, um, I, I apologise. I don't remember your name. This way, quickly, quickly. We've had we've had an, an emergency. Was there an explosion in the manufactorum? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, tech priests have been sent from the uh, from the upper heart, from the middle hive upper. We're not sure. Um, the wounded say that something did indeed explode, and we felt a rumble, but we're not sure where it happened at the moment. Uh, information is being uh, sequestered, I think. Um, but please, this way, tech priests. Many are wounded. Nah, I'll follow. As you follow uh, along, uh, can you guys copy any of those tokens? Uh, yeah, I can move this. No, yeah. can you copy and paste them uh, to create more? <laughs> Don't wait, know if I can, though. Don't you see? No. Can't copy and paste nope. them, no. Okay, I'll keep I think them. I'll keep them. Give us GM permission to do that. <gasps> Never. Such these are really long miles. <laughs> they are. Why they is... are. <gasps> oh my um, god. There's a so... doppelganger in this place. There's two albums. <gasps> oh no. No, there isn't. <laughs> no, there isn't. You saw nothing. So, Jenny, as you're it's led through... It's a chaotic doppelganger. You can see people just screaming. Missing arms, missing legs. Um, this is a... True... Uh, disaster that has happened within um, the manufactorum. Actually, that should be smaller. Um, the nurse quickly leads you over to... Uh, not me. Uh, the nurse quickly leads you over to a couple of patients who are in a terrible state. Um, give me a Medicaid perception, please. Oh, boy. Uh, Medicaid perception does superior chirogen apply here? Um, I so it would, it would too. apply, but it won't apply because, the, uh, uh, of the difficulty of the challenge. So if you roll oh, it flat, okay. but there would normally be a minus 20, there would be a minus 20 to the... Uh... Okay, I close enough. Superior gives me plus 30, I believe. Uh, plus 20 on all mitigate skill tests. Ah, okay. So, you're, you're one off, I will give it to you as you look over the first patient. Um, you can see that his leg has been crushed. Flat. It's a miracle that they were able to actually bring him with it not just falling off. Um, but as you look over um, the patient, Although he's screaming and crying about his leg, you're very quick to notice that the blood vessels around his leg appear to be swelling very, very quickly. It appears as if his leg was crushed for long enough that blood was held there, and after they removed the pressure, the blood is trying to seep back into his body. You have to act quickly in order to save this man's life. The only thing you know to do with the facilities around you is to remove the leg entirely. Please give me a Medicaid uh, test with a plus 20. No, sorry, plus 40? Taking off a limb is really, really easy. Oh, hang on, you don't have a Medicaid mechadendron. So you don't have I a don't. chain, so you don't have a chain scalpel. Uh, Sister, nurse. So you're using a scalpel. So that would make it harder at, with a bone saw um, and a knife. They would have a big enough knife for you to cut the skin away. Um, so, there would only be a plus 20 to the test. Plus 40 because superior chirurgeon. <laughs> yes, so minus the... Yes, put on the, uh, put on the super, superior chirurgeon. As you call nurse over the nurse... She, cutting implements. She comes over with a... She quickly... It seems as if there are equipment laid out on different carts and trolleys and she goes over pulls a trolley over quickly and you can see all the devices that you would need although these are um primitive subpar it'll do i suppose 
So give me your Medicaid with a plus 40. Already did? Oh, sorry, you already did. So, um, as Mediocre! The, as you begin cutting, um, the nurse quickly moves in and holds the patient down. Um, he screams in pain as you begin cutting the flesh away from the bone. As you cut deep into the skin, blood begins to flow. You take out the bone saw quickly and begin hacking away. The bone saw at least is modern and it makes quick work of cutting through the bone. You're able to amputate the leg quickly and efficiently and um, give... no, we'll count it as the same one. Um, and with your degrees you're able to stem the flow of the blood, cauterize the wound and uh, leave the nurse to uh, finish wrapping up. But before the sweat is even removed from your brow, next. you are pulled over to the next person. <laughs> Jenny's kind of in her element right now. Um, I love that you yell next and just get dragged to the next one, while the next page is on you. <laughs> uh, you are currently You're looking at three people. One person has had their arm ripped off, but has a tourniquet around uh, the upper part of their arm. One has been blinded by something that appears to still be corroding the skin around their eyes, and another um, has a metal spike in their upper torso. You need to decide who to um, work on first. Tourniquet can wait. Spike can wait. The eye guy. Okay, give me a Medicaid perception with... There would be a minus 20, but with your superior chirurgeon, um, it's flat. It's flat. Uh, that is uh, uncomfortable. I am going to... <laughs> That's my last fortune point. Because I haven't slept. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fortune that. Oh no, you because... get one per game session oh. for this. The, the, what the? <laughs> Dice are rigged. Okay, so. Oh yeah, that reminds me. As you. Oh, I think that's a little yeah, bit too I, big. I need the darker red. You go, uh, but that's too small. Okay, fine. We'll go big. Wow, that that music is not. Just, no. just, just, just some, just some calm <laughs> violin. You know. Nothing to see here. Quite you. Um, the asylum. Thank you. Uh, so as you look at the individual's face, you can see that it is. You can move uh, the stuff in anywhere on your for your defensing. You don't have to, to you know, keep it all in one area. You can move it along anywhere in this area where you want to defend. Um, so as you look at the eyes, you can see that there is nothing you can do for the eyes. Um, you're not entirely sure if it was fire, if it was some sort of acid or corrosive device, uh, liquid or gas of some sort. Uh, you quickly look over and this is not ideal. Um, you, well, you did fail it. So you believe that it's more of a, you believe it's more of a fire burn. Um, so you quickly get um, a rag, uh, a bandage, placing some, some uh, an, an alcohol solution of some sort to clear the wound. Mm, that's going to hurt like fuck, but to clear the wound and then to disinfect it. Um, you then apply some, uh, some salve, what little they have, and place that on and bandage. Um, give me a Medicaid... Again, this would probably be plus 20. It's not difficult. Um, so that would be plus 40 with your superior chirurgeon. Now we're doing it. Now we're doing it. So you easily um, place the bandage on, clean the wound, and you think, you think you're think you okay, but there's another two patients to go. Um, the first one, the, uh, the third one is dead. The one with the spike in, in their chest is gone. Um, the other one, uh, <laughs> the other one is still with us. That's ominous. Dun, dun. <laughs> we won't be dead for long. 
Motherfucker, what did the other one have? So we had a blinded one, we had one with a spike in the chest, and we had one Turn with... Turn the oh yeah, arm ripped off. Now, th 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 this is where Jenny looks at the dead guy, pulls over, pulls a glove. I didn't lose my license for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you just say you're, like... you're the lucky one. <laughs> so just you look uh, at the eye guy and go, looks like it's your lucky day. You very easily um, can figure out it's a missing arm. So you you uh, <laughs> clean up the wound. It's not. <laughs> I'm going to you give you this one. You want my mid professional opinion? Your arm seems to be missing. You're you're a bit armless now. Case solved. <laughs> see, see if you guys can move the ones that I'm pasting into the other side. Oh, you can. That saves me so much time. Yeah. Awesome. So I can just paste these down instead of making them each time. Sweet. Okay. So, um, Jenny. There are a number of um, other wounded, and there are a number of issues going on. Um, but at this moment, the most critical have been seen. Can you give me a um, another Medicaid test? These are all for standard wounds, so it would be a plus 20. However, as you look around, things are clearly going on in here. Things don't seem right. So, for every plus 10 that you want on your awareness test, you must minus plus 10 from your Medicaid test. So if you want a plus 40, you need to take a minus 40 to your um, Medicaid test. But you do get your bonuses. So remember, there's a plus 20, because these are simple, and a plus 20 for your Chirurgeon, superior Chirurgeon. I'm going to do a basic chirurgeon than with my superior but without the bonus because i want to look around and also okay this one first is oh. that next one rip rip i i am not spending a fate point fair enough he was the lucky one so <laughs> uh if you want to give me a plus 40 to your awareness check 14, not 20? Because I only took 20. Uh, oh, you 20. only took 20. Okay, yep, so plus 20 then. Yep, sorry. Okay, cool. So, four hours pass as you are working, running around, trying to save those that you can. And after the panic is over, the minor injuries need to be prepared, looked after, and cleaned. Unfortunately, the natural hundred, and with so you were already on fourteen hours when you got here. You were awake. Four hours have have passed. About three hours. So you're talking seventeen hours now with combat up and down hive spot hive. Yeah. Uh, you are quite quite tired, and you Sister, just lose recap. track. Unfortunately, you attempt to help some individuals and don't realize that the antibiotics you gave them they reacted to two people have died um, you've lost three but you have saved many many more but as you take some time to drink a cup of recaf to just collect yourself and to take a moment to collect your thoughts you do notice that as you look around the few medical staff that were working don't appear to be in here anymore. The ones that you saw when you first came here, at least the doctors who were somewhat competent aren't here. You see the useless buffoon who was here before, the one who just dossed around, didn't do much, made wrong... wrong um, shit. Made wrong, uh, what is it when a doctor diagnosis? Diagnosis, thank you, thank you, Waldo. Um, great, made wrong uh, diagnoses and had just been incompetent. You do see him as you're working and trying to save lives, and you can just see him pulling more um, uh, 
fabrics over people to signify that they have passed. Um, he does not seem to be saving people in the slightest. Um, you're not sure if this is because of his incompetence or because he's doing it on purpose? You haven't had enough time to really watch him. I'm, and... just, I'm, I'm just gonna walk over to him. Hey, you! Where is everyone? Uh, somewhere else, I guess. Um, not here. Wish they were. Uh, busy, isn't it? No. No, not busy at all. No, I, I've never worked so hard in my life. I must have... You are not working. <laughs> don't, don't mess around, uh, uh whatever your name was. Uh, I am working. Can't you see? And he I points over to the dead bodies. I can make I can bet my cranial implants that you do not he even have sufficient medical training. He goes a a, a little little pale. I I have as much medical training as I need. Um they need my services here and I'm happy to provide. Um then tell me what it is exactly you do here, other than stand around and waste processed oxygen. Uh, that's a little cruel. I, I apply bandages and, and, and salves and and I I give injections to those who need um the uh the boosters or the nutrients of um said injections and and um um I I do all the things that that you do. Uh perhaps not as well not not as efficiently or as as well i suppose that is true are you able to perform a heart surgery oh no no ba basic you first aid perform what i can uh, i can go find me someone competent but they they're not here um why I don't... do you think I told you to go find them? Oh, nurse, nurse. Um, can can we find where the other um Medicaid went? Uh, he stops a nurse who is carrying dirty bandages and has um another pack of syringes as she places the syringes down, takes more dirty bandages. I um yes, of course, Medicus. I uh, I will see what I can do after I drop these off and. See to the other patients in the hallways, and with a with a, a look of just like I've got more than enough to do for fuck's sake. But she goes off. Um. As, uh, would you say anything else to this uh, to this person to the the fake doctor? Oh, Medicus. No, I, I would not gratify him with my presence anymore. Okay, so you um you go back and carry on doing um what you were doing. So we go back a few hours in time yet again. Damn it, I nearly had the I, I forgot what's never mind. Um so we do the time warp, that's what I was thinking of, and we go back uh about four hours <laughs> and we come as the uh, camera zooms in to Liliana. So Liliana, you have just left the weapons uh, Dodgy Dave's Equipment Emporium. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, as soon as I leave the Dodgy Dave's, say goodbye to the people, see Jenny going up, people going down. I'll go towards the, where I last saw Tiffany. Okay. Hmm. Wait, I'm I'm watching my ping at the moment just to see how how bad bad it is. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, you sound all right. You sound it's... fine. You're I'm at fifty six at the moment. I mean, this question needs to have it weekly fit. Yeah, it it is becoming tradition almost. Please don't, don't jinx, jinx it. Yeah. So <laughs> you travel a. I believe it's about an hour um, from Dodgy Dave's. You travel an hour over to the next uh, part of 
So you're in Hab. I think you're in the block area um, where you last saw Tiffany. Some time has moved on since that day, and it is a different hour altogether than when you last saw her. But as you go into that part of the hut of the hab block and you look at the crossroads where she was before, you don't see her, but you do see other um, members of the poison kiss. You do. Would you see a heavy there at this hour? No, you don't see a heavy, so you don't see any uh, of the women with large mohawks. But you do see a couple of um, smaller women. Um, they still have uh, the classic, well, for the poison kiss, the classic trench coat that goes over and um, hides them, hides their uh, what they have equipped on them. You would notice that the trench coats do seem to be uh, modified. The hem seems to be extended. I think that's the right word. So they are longer than your traditional trench coat. Um, as you can see through the crowd, you can see where they would be. You can make your way over to them. I will make my way over to them. I'm going to make my way towards the women, not the men. There are no men. Um, because if I remember correctly, the women are in charge. <laughs> yeah, there are no men um, with this group. Uh, also, did you buy a suit of, comp of flak armor last time? Uh, nope, I'm not wearing anything. I'm, I sold the ooh, gang things, and I'm not wearing any armor. Okay, so it was only one person who bought armor last time. So yes, there would definitely be. Um, Jenny, if you wanted to buy the flak armor for 125 I think it was, you can. There is a suit there. So, you make your way over to the, uh, to the gangers. Um, they don't meet, as they see you coming over to them, they give you a little wave and, Citizen, can I help you? Oh, hi. Um, I met with Tiffany earlier today. Is she around? A couple of days ago, I think. Um, two days, was I think. It, like, was it two days ago? I believe so. I, two days, sorry, yeah. Two days I actually thought it was earlier today. Uh, I met uh, with Tiffany a couple of days ago, and I'm kind of looking for her. Is she around? Uh, yeah, Tiffany's around. Um, she's just getting something to eat at the moment. But um, why? Uh, what interest did you have with Tiffany? <laughs> Lillian is going to smile. <laughs> oh, she certainly seemed like a very great, per good person. <laughs> you don't know Tiffany, do you? Do you? Uh, she rolls um, scrutiny uh, to see if you actually know her. Uh, what do I roll? No, 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 she's rolling scrutiny. Okay, yeah. okay. Because uh, you said she's, she's such a nice person. And they're like, does, does she actually know who this is? There should be a plus 20 to that, I think. <laughs> then they, they, probably, they probably don't understand how crazy Liliana kind of is. They, they just don't... I don't know. I, are you sure you know Tiffany? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna start describing her. Great high, beautiful face, great boots. Uh, okay. Um, I tell you what, stay right here. Of me. Stay here, and we'll. Um, and she gestures to one of the other girls. Go and go and see if Tiffany knows this person. Yeah, cool. Right. Uh, the other girl runs off. Um. You lose track of her when you try and see like where she goes. She goes into the crowd and then takes a couple of corners. The first corner, she's gone outside. Um, about 20 minutes goes by as you're just stood with this other... Um, I'll make small talk with this girl. I'll, you know, say, hi, my name is Liliana. I extend my hand. 
Hi, um, Jane. Nice, nice to meet you, Jane. Likewise, I suppose. Um, where are you from? Which part of the hat, the hive? Oh no, I'm new. New? Yeah, oh. I arrived. I arrived in the hive. How many days ago? A week, I think. Around that time, yeah, something like that. Might be less, it might be more. Uh, actually, I know exactly how long we've been here. <laughs> because I've, uh, in my journal has... How many days? Three out of 180 days. So you spent two weeks. Day. You spent two weeks and two days so far since the game started. No, sorry, two was, weeks wasn't it? and two weeks one day. In the, the spaceship, right? Yes, you were. So it's been like two yeah. days, maybe. Uh, since we arrived in the planet, since we left, I think it's been great days. I've been counting from from then. I mean, three, four days. It, it's got confusing when I stopped keeping a journal. I just kept updating the date. Yeah, I would just have three out of 180. But even so, Lillian is not going to say an exact date. She's going to say a week ago, I think. So you came in with all those uh, refugees, I guess. Yeah, we've had some... Yeah, you can say that. We've had some extra people come in thanks to them. Some extra clients as well, I suppose. I guess I might become one of the extra people? <laughs> I don't need a cock to head to the side. Are you sure you want to, uh, kind of bites her lip and most women who join us aren't in a good condition, if that makes sense? Mm. It's uncommon okay. to have women just want to join us for no reason. Men get a little bit tetchy when they find out that their woman works for a gang that has a oh, oh discrepancy God, do you think it's, do you, I, I'm not married, dear. I'm actually single. And yeah, I mean, you, you people sound like, seem like a happy bunch, so uh, sounds like fun. Happy? Uh, Lilian, is, Lilian is going to look at her arms. I look that old. I, hmm. She's kind of not really sure because you kind of act very weird for a hiver. So she's Liliana, just. Uh, Liliana does not fit because she's a happy, bouncy girl, so. Well, we'll see what Tiffany says, I guess. If you want to join, you can, but, uh, well, it's up to you. you. going to yeah. cut her head to the side. Like, would you not recommend me joining? Why is there, she's going to lower her voice, is there something I should know before I join? Well, look around. Thanks to us, we keep places livable. You know, people in our territory seem to be doing a little bit better than everyone else's. Thus, more people want to just live a God-Emperor-fearing life. If you join us, then you're... well... Oh, I see. You mean if I join you, I might have to deal with rabble that is not living a nice, happy, Emperor-fearing life. Is that what you mean? If you join us and the Arbites or the Enforcers catch you, you're a criminal. Criminals don't... Well... The Administrator... Hang on, actually I've got the wrong one there. Is it the Munin? No, it's not the... Who's the Administratum? Hang on, who's the bloody church? The mi no, Ministorum. Uh, Ministorum. Ministorum. The Ministorum doesn't exactly approve of criminals going to his side. Well, 
Unless you're fighting for the defense of the hive, of course. But you're damned if they catch you and you are. Ah, I see. So you're one of those f fearful types, huh? <laughs> Don't worry. So long as we're not caught, everything should be fine, right? I mean, that is, makes it even more exciting. Think about it. She just gives you a really, really weird look, just like, uh, is this chick for real? And then, kind of, the, the small talk really does seem to drop a little bit. Um, but about 20 minutes later, um, Tiffany does appear. You can see she does stand above uh, the crowd as she makes her way through. And as uh, as she's brought forward, oh yeah, I I remember you. You're alive then. What? Uh, you think I didn't have it in in me? There's a very Italian there. Well, I didn't think you'd survive, to be honest. Um, or oh, did you not bother please. going? Let's just say we found some people down there, but unfortunately they, the, the floor got all wet and they tripped and they might have injured themselves. <laughs> She's going to okay. smile. About nine or so of those people might have gotten injured. I don't know, I lost count. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um... And she is going to roll. Uh, she is going to roll. Scrutiny. Can I boost anything because I'm not lying? I get she critically 20. fails. She thinks you're full of shit. Jenna is, is, smi is smiling and grinning the entire time. Okay. Fair enough. So you, uh, you have somewhere to stay, I guess. That's what you were looking for in the end, wasn't it? Well, that too. That too. Yeah, the place is kind of cramped. And I, we still kind of had to clean the place, if you know what I mean. And I was thinking maybe up here is a little bit nicer. Well, maybe we can even go for a nice dinner. I still haven't eaten the entire day after breakfast. She looks at what you incredulously, just like, is this chick for She looks at her, her ally, who's kind of just nods along, and she takes out a low stick and lights it, and <sighs> takes a long drag. What do you want? What's your game? Oh, Tiffany, I thought you would remember. I still love your boots. She's gonna <laughs> cock her head like, remember? <laughs> okay, darling. So you like my boots? Do you want to fucking lick them? What's your game here? If you want in, state it. If you're some sort of psycho freak who wants revenge for some guy who touched her long ago, welcome. You can cut as many John Toms off as you want. You can even make a chain out of them if you want. But what's your game? Lydia's going to say, I had to be subtle, doesn't seem to work, huh? I mean, I want to join, Tiffany. I mean, you invited me. I didn't think you'd survive, to be quite honest. I mean, I think you come to learn that I can... I'd probably break a lot of expectations. Yes, I'm quite aware now. You were with a group, the same group that you were with her the last time I saw you. Well, I was informed that a group with someone matching your description arrived not too long ago from the elevator and proceeded to kick the shit out of some pathetic queens. I don't really have a problem with this, but look around. And she gestures, and you can see thousands of 
pale, ill-looking citizens going from their pitiful, meaningless jobs being a little cog in a ginormous machine. Now, clearly, you're from off-world. That's fine. That's understandable. There are a lot of off-worlders, and a decent number of them have tried to join with us after they learnt that we were established. It's only natural. But you see, they're all skinny wrecks. They're all wastrels in many respects. Body, mind, soul. But you and your group seem to be far more competent. That's unusual. That's not normal. And your attitude is also very odd. So what's your game? Are you cutting loose the men that you were with before? Here's the thing. They're still technically useful. So it depends. Now you see that's not going to work. We're a sisterhood. We look after each other. Always. And she kind of, as she says that, she holds out a hand and brushes the other girl's cheek. And she seems to lean into it. M most, if not all of us, have grown up in this shithole. And we know what it takes to survive. And what you have to do to climb to this position. You've come along, and whilst I'm interested, you're very unusual. In fact, I may have only ever met one person like you. But that does, of course, make you stand out. So, why would we let you into our family? As she removes her hand from the girl's cheek. If you're going to two-time us with another. Liliana's face seems grows a little more serious, but she's still smiling. She's just going to look, ah, look, Tiffany, I know I stand out, but you see, here's the thing. That's because me and, you know, my friends are quite good at what we do. But, that doesn't mean I don't want to join your sisterhood. It just means that I can be a great asset for the sisterhood. And yes, I'm not skinny, I'm not weak. She's going to look down to her belly. I wouldn't say I'm fat, but I'm well built. I've been living my entire life having to, well, fight for my survival. And Liliana's gonna turn her back and she's gonna pull her shirt a little bit up just so he, she can see the, the lower back of Liliana. And the lower back is covered with scars. <laughs> and she's gonna pull the clothes back down as you can look at. And yeah, I've had my fair share of problems with men, but also women that are, weren't very kind. You people, like you say, brought peace to this place, and I like it. That's why I want to join. Liliana's face features don't no longer look serious, and she looks down. And I still kind of like your boots. Okay, so I am going to need a roll of some sort. Now, I was thinking deceive, because you are kind of lying. There's a lot of truth in what you've said, but joining this group is definitely a lie. Um, or... I don't have deceive no job. Either way, it's gonna be bad. I I'll be honest, when you said I I'll admit, me and my friends are in... The little gremlin in my head immediately went, Gene Steelers! Um, <laughs> it would have to 
I will give you the choice, although it probably doesn't make any difference, of uh, Deceive or Charm. Um, I'm going to try to Charm her. I, I think Liliana is not trying to actually deceive okay. this, this girl. She actually so. thinks it could be a good idea. And she wants to, you know, later on down the line, bring Tiffany into the fold. I will Cause give it's... you, because you told the truth or some of it, I'll give you a plus 10. Yeah, I can't. Hmm. You did kill those other guys, so I'll give you a plus 20. I will be, bring my thing up to a 35. Oh. Close but no cigar. 30 off. Look, I get. I get where you're coming from, I suppose. And you do seem to have some scars that would at least give you some sort of reason, but I just don't trust you. Something in my gut tells me that you're more trouble than you're worth. Or at least you or your compatriots. I tell you what. We have... We have some issues that we need a third party to de be dealing with this issue. I will speak to our boss and I'll see if we can arrange for you to assist us with that. And I'll see if this bad feeling I have about you goes away. Liliana is gonna give a, you know, a green nod and say, Well, Tiffany, I will accept any task you give me. And I don't expect you to trust me. I do look weird. Spending the years scarred me, so people do find me very, very weird. But you can, well, I will prove to you that you can trust me. We'll see about that. Where can I send a messenger for you? Or do you have... A uh, way? Do I have... Uh, do I have a... I don't know, it's basically a phone number, right? It would be a microbead, if, if you wanted to be contacted yeah, it's a micro that way. The, the frequency for my microbead is basically a phone number, right? Do you have I one? I do have one. Did you buy yeah, one last time? Okay. Yeah, I did. Okay. Oh, all three. So, uh, yes, you have a microbead frequency that you can use. Um, you would be aware that microbeads are military equipment. All the frequencies are kind of used. So, you have a frequency that you can give, and this is your frequency. But it's not like a mobile phone where your number is your number. Um, if these frequencies can be used by anyone, in the, in the Inquisition or a uh, Combead. No, the thing that you carry around with you, I can't, a Voxcaster, Voxcaster. I think can encrypt um, microbead transmissions. Um, so keep your messages short and sweet. But yes, you can okay. give you can give out um, your microbeads. Um, would you be aware? You probably wouldn't be aware that um, Ceres is acting as your booster, but she kind of also well, mechanicus are mechanicus, aren't they? Uh, she's listening. To the thing uh, I she's don't. Listening. The thing I don't know is if she told us she could you well serve as a boozer because if she told us i don't know if you know life. that i don't know if you know that that was in binary talk with jenny um out uh, of game okay, then you then do then all then. know um and you know you can give off the microbead number and say if you can get in contact you know if you're in range if you have a vox caster because they might have one um you can contact me on this number 
Oh, you're gonna uh, like it more strange. But hey, I got a box I'll, together. From here, I'll probably go towards the the inn, and I'm gonna be sleeping in the inn this night. But yeah, I'll just give Tiffany the the microbeat number. Oh, frequencies. Like. So as you yes. go to turn away, uh, so Before what happened to middle... you buying me food? <laughs> <laughs> Liliana is going to say, aww, of course I'll buy you your food. Do you have a place you want to eat? Come on, I'm sure. buying dinner. Sure, she's gonna, have a place. She's looking at Oop, she smiles as she says that. Liliana's going to smile back. So, uh, you go off with Tiffany. Um, you go... So, you were on basically a crossroads where um, the Poison Kiss had a little outpost where they could look over people and see who's coming and going um kind of a dealy um she takes you off down into one of the hab block areas into one of these massive streets um and she takes you down the steps down some steps um into a small bar area um in that bar you would see that there are others who look like poison kiss members um, but they don't make any like they don't salute her. They don't. They may notice you as you walk in, but they don't say anything. Um, when you're there, Tiffany would like um, one of the more expensive meals that's on the menu um, at Twenty Thrones. Ouch! A classy bitch. <laughs> Tiffany is a classy bitch. Jesus Christ! Oh, I expected it. But I mean, you know what? You know what? The tab Fuck that it. you're gonna have to pay out. Fuck it. Give me two of those. You want those boots? Okay. <laughs> so I want those boots. I think he wants more than boots at this point. Well, he wants the boots to no, come no, off. No, no, that, 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 that's that's <laughs> the whole plan. He's he's gonna tab that, and when she's sleeping, he's gonna steal the boots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna take the boots and run. <laughs> This entire thing is an elaborate scheme to steal her boots. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, as you're ordering the food, um, a few drinks come out for your 20, well, for your 40 thrones. Um, a few rounds of uh, drink are bought. Um, there's nothing like Amasek or anything. It's all ales that are made from hive goods. Um, but you would notice that when food comes out, it appears to be some sort of canned meat, um, some sort of canned grox meat, in a way. Mm -hmm. Tiffany seems extremely happy as it comes out, and uh, there appear to be like some uh, ration-style biscuits or, um, or crackers that come with it, and it seems to be in a meat juice from the can that uh, Tiffany quickly breaks the crackers off and lets the uh, juices soak into the uh, crackers. Kinky. It's um, it's real meat. It's real meat. So therefore, hmm, that's probably going worse down there. Never mind. Um, so it's probably something that's very rare for underhivers to get or uh, middle What are you planning to see? No, no, no. Just you know, it's real meat. After saying someone saying that's kinky, it's real meat. <laughs> oh. Okay. So this is definitely something far out of the reach of any normal um, hive dweller, um, especially at this level. It's canned meat. We, we yeah. think of it this world in this world's terms. It's not great, but if you've only ever eaten like recycled shit, it's amazing. Um, but you sit and drink and eat for some time. Um, she doesn't really warm up massively. But you do get to know her a little bit more, and she would inform you a little bit um, about the Poison Kiss. And you could get some information about the Hive itself, um, if you want to have a think about what you'd like to ask her. Or if you know now, by all means ask. She, she likes long walks by the Kemvats. Uh 
don't know. I think for the most part, uh, Liliana just wants to get to know Tiffany. And while she's making small talk, she's just like gonna ask what what's good around the the, the place. So she's gonna basically be looking for points of interest. Like, where where's a good store? Where can I go to do this? Where can I go to do that? She tells she would tell you that most of the equipment, but the, like uh, that the poison kiss don't really use stores because their supplier equips them. Um, but there are uh, essentially these places, these places, and these places where she used to buy stuff from and she used to get stuff from, but nothing military style. Um, once. She'd tell you that once you join the Poison Kiss, all of your equipment and armor um, is given to you, if that's what your role determines. She'd probably tell you that most Poison Kiss members end up being prostitutes, um, just because it's an easy way to earn money. They're protected by the gang members, and they're doing it for the group. It's not... Uh, and she would, basically... Whenever she gets annoyed... It's towards the uh, the acid riot. Um, whenever she talks about smashing people up and really enjoying it or going up against someone who's more of a challenge, it's the acid riot. Um, she'd probably tell you about how girls from their side get beaten and get treated terribly. Um, so some of the girls are from their group. And there are fights between them. As for shops that she can point out and go, that's a really good shop. She doesn't have any. But you do get to know each other slightly more. You find out that she really does enjoy busting balls. <laughs> could do here. She's going to be a good contact in the future. So. Uh, again, mostly just points of interest. I'm going to ask if she does have a frequency I can contact her specifically on if she doesn't find and basically just small talk getting to know her yeah no she doesn't actually have a microbead um she'd tell you that she can have messages sent but um she can't actually like they don't have she doesn't have personal ones okay <clears throat> uh while i'm talking to her do i find out her position in the hierarchy or, she's, does, or does she never mention? She would explain that there are different types in the gangs and that you're either equipped for melee fighting, ranged fighting or, <laughs> or stealth or um, she would say okay. that she's fairly high up in, in the heavies but she's a frontline fighter she likes crushing skulls um in the organization hmm, they don't really have ranks she says interesting <laughs> what how does she feel about blood as long as it's not hers she's fine with it does she does she stack the skulls in the neat pile no, she crushes them. I mean, no, she crushes them. <laughs> okay, she's not a core knight. Good. Oh. So, yeah, she, she crushes them. In the floor. Between her thighs. <laughs> I mean, fake thighs save lives. I had something else that I, that I wanted to say. <laughs> the joke kind of made me forget. <laughs> if I remember, I'll say it. But... Sure. Ugh. Oh yeah, I remember. Uh, I'm gonna also ask her if there's any place I can easily meet with her if I have to meet, go meet her. She just uses this does. place. This place it is. <laughs> okay. We'll call this place the Pussy Party Bar. Ah, oh, good. Oh. You're not. <laughs> You're enabling us, aren't you? A little bit. Well, what what else would you? I mean, it's a. I'll think of another name at one point. We'll we'll see. I wasn't really expecting you to be like, oh yeah, let's let's go have dinner at this place. 
So, yeah. The snake dad. Or snake yeah, dad. Yeah, yeah. So, as the camera zooms away from uh, Liliana and Tiffany, what else Wait. would the group like to do? Um, I know some of the, some of our party are busying fortifying what they presume to be their base if uh, if their other member of the uh, of the group doesn't like it it seems like this this mm. uh Monica would probably be trying to catch some <clears throat> gerbils some various small animals to cook up for food gerbils interesting okay which could lead to very bad things, though, because it means I might roll perils and stuff. So you go over to one of the grates that litters this area. Um, you manage to pry one of the grates up, and looking down into the darkness, you can see that these might not be sewer grates, they might just be ventilation, but... Eh, you think maybe something might crawl out of the darkness? Yeah, for the whole entire, you know, rat man. <laughs> I'm not gonna cast uh summon vermin. Uh oh that's sneaky. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. <laughs> just just enough for, to get some for me, I think. We living off the land now, boys. <laughs> so, out of curiosity, double threes. Yep. Did, did you notice that? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, I didn't. Good but... job, Monica. Good job. <laughs> I do have two fate. Oh, wait, no, we yeah, did get one. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Let, go, let's... On. go on, yeah. ro ro roll, roll <laughs> Perils of the Warp. Oh. Let, let, let's summon a gerbil. <laughs> summon <laughs> fucking demon what? That doesn't look like a gerbil. <laughs> yeah, no, he summons like a lesser demon, <laughs> Nargo, and then goes, Are you a gerbil? <laughs> God damn it. Uh, right, so here's. I do his... hope you are out of this of it. Yes, eight is low. Low is good. Which, oh yeah, it's under psychic powers, isn't it? But it doesn't actually tell you... Uh, page 188, I think, or something like that, let me check. It, it's something um, uh, it's psychic yes, it phenomena is. is 197. So, um, unholy stench, the air around the cycle becomes <laughs> permeated with bizarre. <laughs> my, my rule book is struggling to load the page. Yeah, I was on something much worse, I was on warp bands. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you were in Perils of the Wolf. Yeah, you basically fought a, a nasty, nasty fight. So, that's it. so Mordecai, that shit sting. you lift up the grate, and standing over the grate, you begin to look into the Immaterium, trying to coalesce the energies, pulling it from the warp. And as you're concentrating and focusing the power, you release the effect and you feel it go off, but at the same time, there is this god awful stench that just erupts right. from around you. You are well aware that you have just released a psychic fart of the stinkiest variety. Um, you may be lucky and have your comrades not notice as you are stood over a grate that you've just lifted. Um, <laughs> It will be a logic test with a plus 20 to figure out if he's lying. Um, otherwise, it would probably you know, be an, a, an awareness check with a you know, minus 20. Now I 20. imagine, like, Mordecai does it, some, and there are, like, a few gerbils come, and then they smell the psychic force, and they just, <laughs> just go run the away. away. What are you doing? Why are you summoning things? <laughs> <laughs> I just left to go change the light bulb. I'm, How many psychers uh, do you need to change the light bulb? I'm catching Multiple dinner. Multiple because I get shot by the commissar. <laughs> Good reason. 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 Good reason.
clam. <laughs> Thing is, now that it's loaded, I kind of wanted to shift it to Warp Echo, but I think Psychic Farts is much better. By the way, this is this one of the doors you were giving us control over at one point? Um, I believe that's one of the spare ones that I wasn't was meant to get rid of. Because okay. a lot of the they're meant to be more doors that you some of them you do have control over or will when I um when I update the token. Um But yes, so Mordecai, as you stand over this grate, the unholy smell begins to permeate in the surroundings area. Um it must be I'll leave grate. it I'll leave it up to the group to decide <clears throat> If they're near this sewer grate, I personally was actually looking at this grate here. I'll ping it. Um, so it was the one over, so the stream can see it. That's the one that I was looking at when I was going through all of this. Mordecai, if you want it to be a different one, you can. But, eh, uh, I'll leave uh, it. That one works, because it's not close enough to our stuff, because Mordecai knows like, things can go bad. Okay, I so the other two Might are moving around. Um, the other two are moving stuff around in this room, um, preparing their defences, moving crates over to here and checking gun lines and then deciding, oh, let's move it over here, let's put that there, position this here. Um, so... Hmm. I'm probably going to say, because you haven't put any defences outside there, that you don't smell it. Um, you're too busy working away here. Um, how far does a fart spread? <laughs> I mean... Asking the important question. Roll on the scatter table. It's an enclosed place. Uh, more chemicals that you can smell from over a, a kilometre away. Jeez. Like there was once a chemical spill in Germany that I had to evacuate a city on five <laughs> kilometers away. I don't think he's expelling Good that kind of chemical out of his ass just because he. <laughs> it is from no, the No, it's going out of his ears. It's a psychic fart, so it's going out of his ears. Ah. Because it's originating in the brain. So That's give me a perception test with. A you, you just hear Mordecai mutter in the distance. Give me a perception test a with a minus 30. No, a minus 20. We'll use the Roll. 10s digits. Realistic skill minus 20 because improvised weapon. <laughs> So no, Ezio, as you're moving stuff around, you don't smell anything. There's a lot of grease smell coming up from Thank the God. from the uh, barrels that you're moving as well. It's it's too far away. Darius, Minus thirty, right? Uh, twenty. Minus twenty. Roll, roll, I just think our custom is to see the range where you can throw this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Darius, again, the smell of oil, the smell of um. The dust that when you're moving the uh, moving these boxes around, you just don't smell anything. You're quite lucky. I really need to get awareness. <laughs> so, Mordecai, I believe it's over an hour. Some rodents uh, come to you. Let me just double check. Um, it just says that they come to you as quickly as possible. Uh, the time until creatures appear depends on their speed and proximity. Uh, they are likely to arrive over the course of several rounds or minutes. Okay. Right. Can you roll me a... A 1d4 plus 1. Okay. 1d4? Uh... Ooh. Ooh. Something you don't see. Ooh, crap. I probably don't. I, I original. That's an ugly little fucker. Yeah, let's let's copy. No, oh, how am I gonna? <laughs> oh, I know how I do this. Oh. Is this two swarms or just two? It's gerbils. two individuals. Two individual gerbils. 
Fred and Philip. Meat's back on the menu, boys! I think Mordecai is not even going to tell you guys. You, He's just don't, gonna... you don't name the gerbils you're about to kill, dude. Come on. Yeah. Mordecai is just going to summon them and then go set fire to the bodies and cook them over the bodies. Oh my god. <laughs> this one no! is... No! <laughs> no! He uses no! the fire as no! no! He uses no! the fire no! as no! I, I, Actually, no! Actually, no, Mordecai... <laughs> actually, no, Mordecai, go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead and do that. What a, I'm gonna guys, in your guys, guys, meet our dinner. This one is called me. This one is called Patty. So, Mordecai, as you're stood over the grate, you appearing down, looking into the darkness either side, and after a while you hear this... Oh, that's not ready. Well, give me something. I probably could be ready with you can hear this shot. scratching and scurrying, and... As you peer into the darkness, you're like, what is... As these two quite small, um, blind little marsupial creatures come burying... <laughs> little? Fuck, it's it, it, It's little, but it's, it's, it's just I'm, I'm letting you see the size of you know, the picture. Ah. Um, Holy shit, it, it's huge. It is little in, you know, these are one square <laughs> creatures. They are small. No, no, they're definitely they're definitely that big. But blind, uh, covered oh, in some oil, some just their fur is almost black and greasy as they come scurrying along. Their large gnashing teeth just. Why did Mordecai summon the mole king? <laughs> I'm gonna just t take the, the shock mole and just try and shock them both <laughs> into submission. Oh. Okay, uh, so you try and bat them with gonna, a shock I, I was gonna okay. draw a crown on them. Just, just, to, just to knock them out. <laughs> Danny, you may move your room, because that's Mordecai's dance room now. <laughs> <laughs> can, I draw him a, can I draw Mordecai a dance cap? So, <laughs> the, the, um, the weird hive rats, um, don't appear to notice um, as your shock maul comes down, and you kind of just jab. Oh, I didn't put GM again. Motherfucker, never mind. You just jab <laughs> the say... first one in the head and hit your shock stick at the same time, and. <laughs> it, it, it... <laughs> Sorry, I, I hope you're happy. My personal experience teaches me when you smash your mice or rodents, they don't make no Again, the the other one, as you kind of jab it in the head ah, and this, hit the switch, there's just this. Rodents. And it, again, they're, they're both subdued. You can pick them up and quickly snap their necks. Um, and cuff them. You would imagine. Them, quick. <laughs> you would imagine. You'd imagine that these two would probably feed you. Um, as a full dinner, but you could probably have one each, and you'd be hungry, but you wouldn't be starving. Um, why are why are we our own characters now? <laughs> I was gonna say that's a worrying role. This character has some, or this yeah, Barrel has some good characteristics. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm gonna go cook <laughs> them to make <laughs> two rats on a stick. <laughs> Because I this, learned how to do that. The, this is the stat line of the Mole King. Okay, <laughs> so there is, after us now. there is an amusing... Uh, there is an amusing thing, that there is actually a cooking talent in uh, in Dark Heresy. It's a knowledge skill. Always. Oh no. So, um, you is don't it have... Is trade you? No, it's, uh, it's a knowledge skill to uh, cooking hmm. is... Oh, and do, do be aware. Are you actually forbidden lore cooking? So, <laughs> so are you the recipe the the cooking gene steel is. <laughs> no, for the sororitas, the sororitas is secret to the recipe. This the the forbidden lore cooking is essentially a Catachan's cookbook. That's the sororitas is uh, <laughs> recipe for cooked gene stealer. The Imperium cannot know of this. The sisters are eating them. Heresy. And they're so, only getting stronger um, and weirder. It, it would be... Uh, actually, I do need to check. Because uh, I know some... 
scholastic laws can be rolled with no so it'd be an intelligence test um to cook uh you have a plus 10 because you know a recipe you have a minus 20 because you don't have to skill Bugger. <laughs> this is not gonna end well lads minus 10 overall <laughs> Hey! Wow. No. Okay, so if you would like to... We got ahead of ourselves a bit. Um, if you'd like to cast Combustion to set fire to one of the corpses that you want to cook on... Do you oh, really want to cook on the corpses? I don't need to cast Combustion. I can just... I have a, I have one of those lighters. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. How for how hard it is... To to light cloves with a lighter. So you want no, to no, use I manipulate flame? Is that I right? I like a manipulate flame. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's um, easier to do when I actually have it. <laughs> so is manipulate flames a half action, right? Uh, that is, it's like a half action. Yeah. Okay. So as far as I'm aware, you can't use manipulate flame to make a flame more powerful so you can control it you can snuff it out as far as i'm aware you can't make a lighter burn with the heat of a set thousand suns um as far as i'm aware that's not possible that would be heresy if, if he made it burn with a fury of the thousand suns you know, so technically if you cast combustion on the rest they are cooking from the inside out so so you can i'm not going to stop you from using your lighter to cook a rat um it's going to take you a long ass time i cast molten <laughs> beam on the gerbil it, it was more use the lighter and then manipulate flame to help set fire to whatever i was going to use to then cook the rat oh okay no no that's a bit of wood or something, Are you like something that burns hot enough to cook. Uh, so there's cloves, there's people, there's um Yeah, people work, that's fine. I mean yes, you could render the fat down off the people and make yourselves a fat powered campfire stove. It is doable. It's fucking grim, but it is doable. So I you... would shoot you for that. So you, you want to? has gone weird again. You want to go and set fire to the corpses, and then use them to fuel your dinner. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> as a character, yes. As a player, no. Okay. So. Mom, you go into the you go in, again. you go into the room where the uh, corpses are being kept. They haven't been there for too long, so decomposition has not truly started yet. Um, rigor mortis would have sit, sat uh, would have started to kick in, and then by now, um, I imagine it would start to believe be leaving. So we're not even talking about the corpses being bloated and disgusting. You look down at these men. And are you sure you want to set fire to them and cook your dinner? Think about this. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I have half a mind of Jenny, like, now calling uh, Mordecai. Hey, you ever feel like you're standing in a dumpster fire? <laughs> you sure? <laughs> Again. As a character, he knows it will work, and he is hungry because he hasn't eaten in ages. Fair I enough. I will. More. So I would like a willpower test. Um, I would <laughs> probably like imagine <laughs> that there'll be a minus ten at least to this. Um, yeah. Yeah, minus ten willpower. I, I think is is where this. <laughs> Where the role needs to come in for this, sure. Somewhere in the warp, there is a thousand sun sorcerer <laughs> in front of his crystal crystal bow with a butt with a bag of popcorn. 
Okay, so okay. The dice wanted so, to happen. <laughs> um, Mordecai, oh, you light your lighter and you... Because as far as your comrades know, they've heard some weird... <laughs> but apart from that, they haven't heard anything as they're moving things around. Um, they could think this is Mordecai being weird. It's possible. <laughs> but before they get the chance to in investigate, Mordecai has left. He has wandered off to where the other base was. And he lights his lighter and gets the flame, manipulates, manipulates it. Flame? Uh, no, it's fine. Um, as you pass the flame onto the corpses, their clothes begin to set to fire. It takes a while of you manipulating the flame, keeping it going, but after a while, the skin begins to burn, the juices leak into the clothes, and the corpses are on fire. You sit there and you watch as you put your two rats on a metal stick, a metal pipe, and you begin turning them over the flame. As you watch the meat on your stick begin to cook, your eyes are constantly drawn into the flames as you are watching a human being burn to ashes. As you are watching his face melt away, you turn your stick of meat, staring into the flames. Praise For whatever name. reason, you don't gain insanity from this event. But Damn it. <laughs> you, Damn definitely, it. <laughs> you definitely feel that this is something... You would get the feeling that there's something... This is wrong. It, this is not normal. But it's done now, do, so... Do I, get that, do I get that feeling for a minute and then I remember, wait, one of them threw a grenade at my head? No, no, you're, you're cooking people. Uh, you're, you're, you're burning people to, to use as, as, as a cooking source, a heat source for your food. That's fucked up, dude. That's really fucked up. <laughs> and sadly, That's even... Even Imperial oh, yeah. citizens have, you know, there are limits to where, okay, this, this, is, this is fucked up. You know, we live in a fucked up world. And then you see someone cooking rat meat <laughs> on top of corpses. And you're like, no, no, this is a whole new level of what the fuck. I'm done. I'm leaving. <laughs> but the God Emperor did protect and your mental cognition has remained firmly intact. For whatever reason, we're not sure. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who are You're too far away You wouldn't smell the cooking meat Maybe once Mordecai returns You might smell um... Zinch is literally face bombing <laughs> that... you know, I, 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 I like wondering... think... What I do is just come in eating one and, go, and just with the other in my hand And just kind of like Get one Do, do, you, do you suck in the tail As you say there <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like I caught some of the things in the servitors. Do you guys want one? God damn it! You did not just say what you said. Who is this to? It's to uh, you two. Um, you two, yeah. Deceive check if you want to uh, to say about finding them in the servitors. I will give you a plus. I'll give you a plus ten. Because you are always going on about it, I don't... <laughs> yeah, it'd just be a plus 10. I can't give you more. It's so unbelievable, but yet you keep going on about it, I will give you a plus 10, just for pure persistence. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, we lost him. The joke actually paid uh, off. Uh, I'm yeah, gonna use... right. I'm going to use a fate to re-roll that. Did you say we had regained one from last Yes, at every session for Dark Heresy, you gain one fate point. Every time okay, we play. I'm use that. going to use that now. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my it's god. Oh my Best god. Best fate point ever. Wow. Can you roll me... Uh... <laughs> okay, so this is a lie. So you do get to use um, Scrutiny Fellowship to determine if he's lying. There is an oh, issue, however. Yes. You get a minus 10 for every degree of success he gets. <laughs> He's got four degrees of success and one for passing, so that's a minus 50. I'm a perception ro Yeet. Scru <laughs> scrutiny Fellowship. Oh, you almost crit that was failed. Scrutiny Fellowship. <laughs> you almost minus crit 40. failed and you needed a 50. crit 60. Yeah, perception there might have been a shit. Fellowship, 
You know, I, you do realize you just. Oh, oh not even for perception. You're, so you you both just sat, you the stood there. The nasty juices of her dead body. You're stood there as Mordecai comes in, and you're like, "What's he eating?" And he tells you that he managed to get something out of the servitors, and the way that he delivers it, it is so blasé, so absolutely normal. For a moment, you're like, "Oh, okay, no, that's fine." Wait, what? And he says it again, and it's just like. You really do believe that he's telling the truth, but there is something in your mind, and it may be a mini Jenny on your shoulder, just <laughs> screaming. <laughs> but you believe him. It's like, uh, why would he lie, though? But uh, Why would you lie about something so goddamn retarded? <laughs> There's no other word about it. Why would you lie about something? You really do feel as if he's either got an amazing poker face and, you know, he's devout in his conviction that where he got these from. But you're, something in your brain just screams out that this can't be real. But you can't tell. You think he's telling the truth, but you, there's that thing in your brain that's like, no. I mean, Saris would kill him if he touched her servitors. He technically didn't touch the servitors, he found next to the servitor. Okay. Right. <laughs> also, I, I, you're probably gonna get super diseased, you know that, right? <laughs> I mean, I cooked him well enough. Alright, well... The, the... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what... You've just beaten, or where the hell you've got it. All I know is if you get sick, you're definitely staying in the other hut, in the other bunk area. But, uh, right. <laughs> food, oh, is, God. food is food, and I cooked it well. You sure you don't want to taste? I'm, I'm sure. I've got my own rations, but thank you. Anyway. Um, Ezio, what about you? <laughs> Can I look at the rat to see how good the meat is cooked? <laughs> yeah, sure, you can look at it. Uh, oops, sorry, um, I wanted to go on to there, not you guys. Um, yeah, sure, you can look at it, and as you look, it does look like it's cooked properly. It's all the way cooked through. You take out your knife and cut into its, uh, into its side, and you can see that, no, it's cooked all the way down to the bone. And it's still hot. I mean, it'd still be taste. warm. Yeah. Um, I mean, warm. Yeah, it, yeah, it's definitely warm, um, and it feels like it was only cooked maybe five minutes ago, a little bit longer. But then I eat a rat on a stick. Oh, Christ! <laughs> I am not treating that. <laughs> I'm not aware. That is of... a karmic experience. <laughs> I'm not aware of it being cooked on human, so I don't. So I have nothing to blame. Right now. I mean, you could ask, how did you cook this? But never mind. Um, so you eat it, it tastes... It's real meat. So there is that side of this is real, tangible. As you bite into the flesh, it's, you know, it comes apart in a, the way that only meat can. And in a way, that is... A joy. There is something satisfying about sitting there and pulling the meat off the bone and getting that flavour and juices. Um, you've been eating protein paste and fungus bread and there is something extremely enjoyable about it. But at the same time, it has a weird taste as well. It is vermin. It's not going to be... It lived on garbage. It probably tastes quite garbagey, but at the same time, it's meat, so yeah. it was pleasant enough. There's an odd slimy taste. 
You know, I, you, should, you should get corruption for giving this shit. <laughs> yeah. It's you know. not warp spawn. It's, it's not come from the warp, you know. It was warp summoned, though. <laughs> True. Yes. Nice. True. But this they are just right normal. Back. They are just normal animals. They were cooked over decomposing bodies. Well, not again. Decomposition Which we're going to have to get hadn't rid of. truly taken in, but yeah, one of the corpses is now. Oh well, another one of the corpses is really burnt and gooey, kind of. Because I doubt you stayed there for the full like nine hours or eight hours or whatever it would have taken for the bodies to cook completely. So I imagine you just put it out once you were done cooking. Uh, I. I... I probably wouldn't, because I would go go oh, back. Hold on. <laughs> I would go back and then actually, uh, well, I'd say I better go get rid of those bodies and then make sure that they all get set off fire and burn to ash. <laughs> you sir, deserves the corruption, boy. It really, <laughs> really does. But that's more because the like he knows that bodies burn to ash, and ash is really easy to get rid of. Yeah, I mean it takes a long ass time, and there's a lot of smoke and sh crap that's given off. But yeah, okay, um, okay. So it would take a while, and you would need to uh, cast combustion if you want to do all of them. Um, oh yeah, unless you're trying to like just pile them on top like a bonfire. In which case, it's going to take you a lot longer to do, because you're going to have to sit around and wait for it to burn and make sure you don't like... Because obviously once... So there's a lot of water in the body, and the clothes aren't enough to ignite it fully. Um, you... Like, he'd probably take a look around, make, you know, make sure the doors... Sh Doors uh, to the outside world are shut, so no one could just wander in on him doing warp fuckery, and then... He would probably speed things up. The yeah. Um, Are you telling me you're not gonna make a bonfire so you can sleep by the fire tonight? No. If I find out you are sleeping by the fire tonight, <laughs> it stinks. It genuinely you would you wouldn't get away from that smell, Mordecai. Um, it fucking reeks. The smell of burning, cooking fat, and it's not pleasant. There is a meaty smell to it, so there is, there is that. Um, my stomach grumbles every now and again. I go, wait, no, it shouldn't be. Shouldn't you are be watching humans cook, so there is, you know, that whole Love gross. Love I mean, apparently, I heard someone that got burned that smelled like stick. It... Do you want me to roll combustion then? Or... Yes, yes, um, please do. Uh, you only need cast it twice just for you getting the power, because there's a lot of bodies in there, but I'll say that you've piled them up in a way that you can get rid of them. So four of the bodies go up and disappear from this world, and then the other five are burnt up as well. Um... It's disgusting, stinks, and it's not at all pleasant. But you have um, you have got rid of uh, of the corpses for now, at the very least. Um, what these ones? So, as for the group as a whole, now at the moment we have got Jenny, who is currently seventeen hours into her day. Jenny, nothing else really happens at the. That's the infirmary. You can stay there for longer to complete your shift of eight hours. Or um, you can call it a day and head off to go home. If you want to yeah. carry on, you can Jenny sleep would... there. No, Jenny's going to sleep there. She's just going to be Mordecai. So uh, we have a trash fire here and I need to make sure it's put out. So I'm burn the place down while I'm away. And she'd be probably <laughs> at least a few yawns in between the words. Well, I hope your trash fire goes as well as the one I've been taking care of. Wait, what? Mordecai, uh, you hear people screaming in the background. <laughs> it's on uh, It's microbead, and Jenny said specifically that she microbeads Mordecai. So it would go to his 
specifically. Because I'm I'm not uh, aware that anyone else has a more micro bead. Yeah. Um, I'm just uh taking care of some of the trash back at the uh <clears throat> our home. Ah, <sighs> you had me. Oh, horrid. Well, don't wear yourself out too much. We'll have a bed ready for you when you get back. Uh, it's too late for that. Um, I, I, I do have Whenever to ask you this. Get back. <laughs> is that room where he, he closed the door and there's the coffers? Is that room, is there ventila a ventilation system there? I think there actually was. There are <laughs> there are vents uh, that connect lots of areas in this uh, place. Oh, okay. So yes, less bad then. Less bad. Do we just gas the uh, <laughs> tech priest by accident? Sorry, we didn't. More than I did. Fortunately, it's the funny. smoke is going up, so it's it's you haven't. It's not, it's... Yeah, it's not just that. I mean. You do realize in the Middle Ages people would dig a hole under a castle, fill it with pigs, and <laughs> fire to them so that the place would blow up, right? Yeah, that's very specific circumstance. That's not going to happen with nine corpses. Um, the the they're not. He's not chucking in pitch down there to get it superheating so the rock explodes. Oh, it's fine. It's a... That room is no. You shouldn't open that door anymore. It should have more choppy gases than. It certainly Not does. Again, like I said, it, it, it's ventilated. So, so um, Jenny, you have basically got accommodation um, for the night at the infirmary. You can mark down that you've done two. Well, yeah, you've done two full shifts. Um, as the night goes on, you do have to do other. Um, minor medical jobs it's uh, you know bandaging wounds stitching wounds nothing nothing too out there nothing like the the um emergency ones that you had to do first you do find out that the individual who you believed had burns on their eyes actually got sprayed in the face with a corrosive oil that was under pressure so later on, you find out that um, the corrosion carried on eating away. Um, so you remove the bandages and you uh, see that the skin is now eaten away even more. So you apply a um, a neutrifying? Uh, no. Neutralizer? Yeah, that's the word. You apply a neutralizer to the uh, to the wound that seems to stop the, uh, the corrosive... Um, oils that had sprayed in the person's face. Um, the eyes are completely gone and you imagine that uh, because you didn't catch it soon enough that cybernetic implantments are probably not going to be viable but hey ho hey ho you bandage, bandage the person up. Oh well you can save them all. So as you carry on your operations through the night Jenny you very very late at night this would probably be around the time that you were trying to get some sleep or just trying to get a wink or two here or there um can you give me a perception test with a minus 30 as you hear voices coming from outside of the infirmary um on one of the corridors that leads into the um into the uh manufactorum this is where the patients were being brought through you don't just get the useless guy to do it. I'm busy. You don't quite hear what is going on. You don't quite hear what the conversation is about. But you do hear the sound of someone being slammed up against a wall. And a very loud voice. I will not pay more. But that's all I... you hear. I, uh, that Jenny would probably get up and be groggily like, wait, walk out the, uh, what's, what's the rockers, more patience? The door doesn't open, but you just hear, sort it out. 
or I will. Before you hear footsteps, very um, heavy set footsteps. Can I security the door to open it? You can just open the open the door. It's not oh, locked. Well, I'm gonna. It's just a I'm closed gonna. door. So you open the door, and um, you can see the um, useless doctor is stood there. Looks rather pale um, as he is up against the wall. No one's holding him there. Um, he just is still in that position with shocked eyes, pale skin, and uh, a individual is making their way down the corridor. They appear to be in robes, not manufacturing overalls. Uh, but you're not quite sure what the robes are. Um, can you give me a perception test? Flat, I'm not giving you any bonus. There are no bonuses or uh, negatives from me, but you can add anything that you have that would give you a bonus. No, don't, don't really have anything. Oh! Okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you that. Even through blurry eyes, you can make out that these are the robes of someone from the um, administratum. A, 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 yeah, it's the, it's the Adeptus Administorum. It, I suppose they would have different colours for different areas or different ranks. Um, you imagine that maybe he's the supervisor of the Manufactorum? Um, his, like you don't see any dirt on his robes, but he's at the end of the corridor by the time you open the door. I'm, I'm just going to semi show him. Can you bully this useless idiot somewhere else? Uh, uh, just, just, look. He kind of pushes you to the side, not heavily, just to so that he can go into the infirmary. And I... Uh, yeah. The individual that you uh, speak to down the corridor doesn't, down the hallway, doesn't turn round. He carries on walking and then disappears. On this, I even the manufacture. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm just lock the door and go back to sleep. Sure, cool. Um, Muttering about incompetent flashbag. <laughs> sure. Weren't you, weren't you from the group that actually yes. didn't mind me? Yes, but I am half conscious and annoyed and sleep deprived. So, um, Liliana, um, yeah. it is about, you spent about an hour, maybe two, with, um, with Tiffany. So it was 10, 11, so you're about 13 hours into your day. Um, what would you do? Would you head back to the uh, base, or would you go to the to the tavern, or...? Um... No, if the base is still far away, I'm just gonna go to the tavern and then sleep at the tavern. Okay. So... Uh, unless this place is also technically secure, I don't know. <laughs> this is more of a... This is more of a bar stroke yeah, hang out yeah, for yeah. the poison kiss uh they don't really have rooms to rent uh, I'll, I'll just go to the tavern okay so you make your way back to the tavern and i mm, yep yeah, i part of me is saying that no we should carry on we should just fight on through However, there's a massive part of me that goes, no, the, ne the next part's probably going to be a long... Oh, no, but... I mean, I'm technically in the safe zone. Everyone's in safe zones. It's probably a good place to end the episode off. Aww. It probably is. Sadly, I would like to continue because, much, much sadness, we will be taking a two-week break. I know my heart. Oh, my yeah. heart breaks no. in two. Yeah. Sadly, so. First, they would, there's last session before the. Before, what am I gonna be doing? I know. Yeah, I, I know. don't know what I will be doing. 
I'm going to be painting models. It is much, much sadness. But this is actually an easy place for me to leave notes and to apply things. That everyone is in a safe spot and we can take it from there. Some of us are worshipping Nurgle. Some of us are doing disgusting, heinous things that they should have got insanity for. But hey, I was fully provides. open to him getting his su <laughs> insanity. So, I hope you've enjoyed this episode and are looking forward to when we start up again in two weeks' time. But remember, and don't feel sad. Do not... And never take cooking advice for a, from a psyker. Very true. Hey, Mordecai is pragmatic. At, at least not from oh. Mordecai. We do at the very I, least. I, met... I had a delicious full course meal with Tiffany. You didn't cook it, though. That's not cooking advice, that's just getting going to a restaurant. <laughs> we do at the very cook, least... We do at the very least have <laughs> one more episode to go. But that would be of our fantasy show. So, I hope hey, you've enjoyed this episode hey, and will join us hey. on Thursday for our fantasy show. Where I believe oh, yeah, messages will be Libya dropped in off. Fantasy. I totally forgot. <sighs> what? Yes. So, Wait. I hope you enjoyed everyone and looking I am looking forward to next time. So take care everyone. Said that too many times. Take care and bye bye for now. Bye. I remember, cook your yeah. stuff on people. <laughs> no.